questions, implications, and visions. As I said earlier, I have generated many more questions than answers in doing this work. A man once asked me in a lecture if I thought God was becoming addictive. I was startled with the question and stopped to take a look at what he was asking. I had just drawn a diagram of the living process system, and in drawing that conceptualization had said that we are affected by the process of the universe, God, and we affect the process of the universe. I later learned that I was expressing what David Bohm calls enfolding. His question was, if we are progressively becoming more addictive, is then God also becoming progressively more addictive? A good question, a frightening possibility. We live in a world, on a planet, that is groaning and begging for a respite, a healing. Have we pushed ourselves so far that we can no longer resist the necessity for healing? That's what the addict does. As R.D. Lang says, we live in a culture that would absolutely fall apart if the truth were told. In order to recover, addicts have to get honest. More and more people are entering recovery from various addictions. Just as we have built in mechanisms and processes within us that we need for healing ourselves, so will perhaps the massive movement of recovery from addictions become the process for healing the culture we have created. Yet, we also need to look at other questions as they emerge. For example, we need to ask, is time not really linear? Can we truly be in two or more places at the same time? Is space not linear or defined as we think we know it? Is it possible to occupy two or more spaces and times simultaneously? I believe so. I have witnessed both these phenomena in deep process work. Australian Aboriginal medicine men and American Indian healers have transcended time and space. Do we have something to learn from tribal indigenous science? I think so. Can we change the past? As we do our work, do we not only change the present, but also the past? I believe so. I have seen it happen. By doing our deep process work and fully living our process, can we participate in healing on a universal level? Does each person represent a stretchable gene that can transposition for a changing universe similar to what the gene on the individual chromosome represents. I think it's a possibility. I am eager to do further exploration. Are the possibilities really limitless and beyond our wildest imagination? I believe so. In deep process work, when people have deep processes that seem to come from a past life and our experiences that are very real, to them about, for instance, the horror of war or the terror of a death camp? Are these possibly the tapping into the collective unconscious or the hollow movement to give us a real gut level knowing of the horror we have created as a human race? When we get beyond our addictions and our controls so we can see and feel these experiences, is this an attempt of the hologram or the universe to send up these memories for healing on a planetary level? Can we also reach into the hollow movement, not only to experience the horror of all time, but also the loving spirituality and beauty of all time? I believe so. I have experienced this. Can we build a true global community and operate as equals with all creation as a hollow movement? I believe so. Can we let go of reductionism and build, expand, encompass the whole and respond out of concern for all things? I believe we can and must. How remarkable that we have within us a process for healing all the psychological, emotional, and spiritual trauma that we experience as a result of our participation in a society based upon a worldview that causes the very trauma from which we need to heal. 
what a wonder that as we have developed a progressively detached, isolated, addictive, rationality dominated lifestyle, our inner beings have been busily concocting a way to deal with the very issues we have been inventing. Not only do our stretchable genes allow us to develop and adapt to a system that is progressively lethal, which may not be as positive as it initially seems, these very same genes give us the inherent ability to cope with and heal from what we have unwittingly developed. Perhaps there is a reason that native people all over the world so readily are succumbing to the side effects of this addictive system. They encounter it before they have built up a process inside themselves to deal with it, because the normal state of the human organism is not to have to contend with the problems we have created in Western culture. Of course, ironically, the mechanistic culture that we have built is attacking the physical, psychological, emotional, and spiritual immune system with greater ferocity and frequency. Yet, just perhaps, it is this very defense against this system, our addictions, that will lead us to a path of recovery and a paradigm shift. And we would not need this shift if we had not created the system we have created. Native peoples seem not to need to make this shift unless they become infested with Western culture. I know the theory of homeopathy holds that physically we have inside us the solutions that we need to heal ourselves. The living process work has shown that the same is true on the emotional, psychological, and spiritual levels, of course, affecting the physical as well. What if we have developed an internal process to cope with the problems we have created, and as we heal ourselves from the effects of a world ruled by mechanistic science, we heal the system? I want to repeat that I have nothing but awe for the process of healing, that we have available to us. I have participated in building a grassroots movement for healing traumas that I never thought in my wildest imagination were even amenable to healing. I have not participated perfectly. I have glimpsed how important it is to participate in the evolution of a system in which people claim their own lives, connect with their spirituality, and live with the universe. I have noticed that we often speak of objectivity when we mean being free of the contamination of unprocessed personal material. Frequently, the most emotional outbursts are presented as being objective. As it is practiced, there is a great difference between being objective or rational and being clear. Clarity comes from confronting our addictive process and doing our deep process work. When we do those two, a paradigm shift is inevitable. Living in process does not require a predictable God or a solvable, orderly, linear reality, nor does it require chaos. The order-chaos dualism is irrelevant. When we just trust the process and participate fully in our lives, we live the universe. We do not need a system built on the illusion of control. God is the void. God is chaos. God is organization. God is process. Questions abound. What I am talking about here is not nearly as simple as creating your own reality. Living our process requires faith and leaps of faith at every moment. It does not require us to be naive. As R.D. Lang says, if you love someone who lies or is deceptive, then one is not loving them by trusting them. We need to become realistic in an illusional world, and we need to claim our place in it. I have concerns about whether an open system can survive when it supports the existence of other open and closed systems especially when the very nature of a closed system is to destroy everything unlike itself. 
we see Native people all over the world struggling with this issue. Yet, when we or they seek to destroy closed systems, we become one. Throughout the world, peace groups, environmentalists, healers, and people embracing aliveness are struggling with this issue. I do not know the answer. I know full participation out of my living process is the only true possibility. To me, deep process work is miraculous. I have seen healing of a kind and at a depth that I never thought possible. Deep process work can and does transcend time and space. It has pushed me to challenge my previous concepts about both as I experienced a transcendence that I never before felt possible. If the hologram, hollow movement, is enfolded at all levels, does that mean that all time and all space is available to us right now? I have had experiences during my deep process that suggest this possibility. If we have a psychological, spiritual, immune system process that is not just feelings, and in which feelings can be a door, do we have available to us levels of growth, healing, and awareness we have not reached and yet are fully available to us? I believe so, and I have experienced these possibilities. What does it mean that masses of people are coming up with incest and early sexual abuse memories? What if the emergence of the incest memories worldwide is coming out of enfolded reality and is the way the cosmos moves to eliminate these occurrences? I know that I see people come alive during this work in a way that I have never seen before. I know that I participate with people of different races, cultures, and backgrounds who globally are dealing with the same issues and are healing. Is the cosmos pushing us to a critical mass of people in recovery and people who are learning to live their process because we no longer have the luxury of non-living? I believe so. We have a possibility. We have an opportunity. I only know that as I participate more fully in my life, life participates more fully in me. We have a possibility, a sacred possibility. So ends the book. <laughs>